Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about what the strong macroglobulinemia. This might be a strange topic to many, but to those who have been diagnosed with it, um, maybe you are a relative, a friend, or someone with this disease, uh, please follow up. And even if you're not, just educating yourself about a new medical term uh, is something worth trying, right? Okay, with that in mind, let's go. Wardenstrom macroglobulinemia is a plasma cell dyscrasia. Here we have excess immunoglobulin IgM. The etiology is unknown. We don't know any predisposing factor or factors. There are some association anyway with autoimmune and chronic immune stimulation. It's a kind of sporadic disease, but it is familiar in about 20%. The pathophysiology is essentially that in malignant B cells of Wadestrom macroglobinemia, somatic mutations and chromosomal abnormalities have been identified. A recurrent mutation can occur, and that will occur in gene called MYD88. And that is going to occur in the vast majority of people with Wadestrom macroglobinemia. Some will have that mutation in CXCR4 gene. The clonal B cells result in the production of abnormal immunoglobulin M. The monoclonal immunoglobulin M may manifest itself clinically, either in clinical wadestral macroglobinemia or in IgM gammopathy of undetermined significance. IgM can act as autoantibody directed against myelin associated glycoprotein or other nerve component resulting in neuropathy. So, people with Wadesor macroglobinemia can develop neuropathy. The IgM can be against red blood cells antigen. Deposit in kidneys extracellular space by IgM protein is possible. Still on part of physiology, cryoglobulinemia can occur when IgM precipitates in cold temperatures. Hyperphysicosity syndrome can occur because IgM molecules will slow the passage of blood. Then the red blood cells will form rulers, rulers formation. The red infiltration of hematopoietic tissues will result in anemia and also lead to thrombocytopenia. I know what that will lead to. Bleeding, right? Could lead to neutropenia. And you know what that will mean? Infections. Lymphadenopathy, swelling of the lymph nodes all over, and hepatosplenomegaly. Central nervous system may be infiltrated by plasma cytoid lymphocytes. That is a form of atypical lymphocytes. And that will be affecting the meninges as well, giving us a situation called Bing Nail Syndrome. Bing Nail Syndrome is malignant lymphoplasmacytic cells that have invaded the central nervous system. And you know when that happens, there will be neurological deficits, right? You can pause and go over that part of physiology again. What are the clinical features here? You could be asymptomatic at diagnosis in 25% of patients. Some will develop peripheral neuropathy. I've talked about destruction of myelin the other time. Upper viscosity because it's going to block, you know, blood uh, flow. 
anemia because if you treat the bone marrow, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaline, bleeding because there will be thrombocytopenia, dizziness when there's anemia, deafness, and diplopia. You know, images appearing double. There's possibility of ataxia, tinnitus, confusion, dementia, stroke, coma. When there's hyperviscosity, all these can occur. Okay? Heart failure. Neuropathy with paresthesia and weakness. Cryoglobulinemia. Remember I said IgM can precipitate under cold temperature. So in winter times, affected people with Wadenstrom macroglobulinemia can come down with renal phenomena. They can develop urticaria, oporia, acrocyanosis, and tissue necrosis. When kidney is involved, we may, be, we may be dealing with renal insufficiency, nephropathy, nephrotic syndrome due to amyloid deposits. When the gastrointestinal system is involved, we may be dealing with malabsorption, and that could lead to diarrhea, steatoria because we're going to have incomplete digestion of fat, lymphangiectasia, and protein losing enteropathy. When the pulmonary system is involved, we're dealing with cough, dyspnea, pleural effusion, diffuse pulmonary infiltrates on chest x-ray or CT, and of course, isolated mass. Involvement of the skin will give us lymphoplasmoid cells, and that may infiltrate the dermis and produce macula or papulonodular lesions. We can run some laboratory investigations, like complete blood count, because we've talked about anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia, right? So we need to know the picture, right? Even peripheral blood smear. The neutrophy will be down, the platelets will be down, and LDH will rise. Beta 2 microglobulin will be elevated. Uh, erythrocyte segmentation rate will be greatly increased, but don't be surprised, it might be within the normal value, normal range. FCDN will be elevated, giving us sign of chronic inflammation. When you run the cone test, it might be positive. Bone marrow aspirate and biopsy will show lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. And you can run your serum protein electrophoresis. The serum viscosity should be acid or done when you are having IgM that is greater than 4 gram per deal. Because the eye level will show that there's going to be clogging you know, along the path, and then the red blood cells will clump together, forming rulers formation, leading to upper viscosity. To be able to make a definitive diagnosis of adestrum macroglobinemia, we must find IgM gamopathy in the serum. When we check the serum, and find IgM gamopathy that is pointing to that. And when we do bone marrow biopsy, greater than 10% of the sample must be lymphoplasmacytic you know, in future or must be lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. Let me repeat. When we take the serum, we are going to get IgM gamopathy. And when we do bone marrow biopsy, greater than 10% of the sample must be lymphoplasmacytic features or must have lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. Then when we do the genetic assay, you know, 
MYDH8L265P gene will occur in over 90% of adestrum macroglobulinemia. Let me repeat finally. There will be mutation in MYD88L265P gene. Mutation will occur in that when it comes to Wedderstrom microglobulinemia. Differential diagnosis. It may be smoldering Wedderstrom microglobulinemia. In that case, it is asymptomatic or indolent. Well, congratulations to those who have that, but an eye will be kept on them. It might be Kinesler syndrome. That is a case where someone will be having chronic urticaria, fever, and joint pains or chronic inflammation. Remember, I said the other time that Wadestrom macroglobulinemia could have IgM that will precipitate under cold temperature, like winter time, right? And the individual would then develop what is called cryoglobulinemia. And part of the features of cryoglobulinemia, apart from renal phenomenon, will be urticaria and the rest. So here you could see chronic urticaria in Schnitzler syndrome could be a differential diagnosis. It could be IgM multiple myeloma. You know, you know in multiple myeloma, we do best Jones protein, right? and IgM monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. We'll talk about that in the pathophysiology. Could be chronic lymphocytic leukemia because of ATP lymphocytic cells, right? And multiple cell lymphoma or amyloidosis because I've said that when it's affecting the renal uh, system, there could be deposits of amyloid in you know, the renal system, and it could be marginal zone lymphoma. So those are the possible differential uh, diagnosis. And you know, it means we are gonna do a lot of things, we do the laboratory and you know, do the definitive investigations and put everything together before we label the affected person as having this particular uh, syndrome. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. The next one will be how we are going to treat Wadestron microglobulinemia, and it won't be long. So check out my channel for the next one or two days. That will be published as well. My heart goes to everyone affected. Thanks for listening. Kindly remember to subscribe and share. Thank you.